Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the Glucial channel. Okay, right, so we're in the process of discussing the structure of the Glucial channel. So we've discussed how uh, the uh, alpha helices are positioned relative to one another and how they form like the star shape here, which is uh, the Glucial channel. Okay, so we now want to study just the inner leaflet, this ring of M2 alpha helices. So let's draw this uh, down here. So if we now look from a different angle, what I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw as if we are looking from this sort of angle here. So this is a um, shot that we're seeing basically from above. We are looking down on the receptor, whereas now what we're going to do is look from side on. So let's draw one of these M2 alpha helices then. So down here what you'll have is the M2 alpha helix starting. So the M2 alpha helix has uh, seven twists in it basically, seven turns. So we've got four so far, one, two, three, four. Then here comes the fifth, the sixth, and they're very conscious that we're running out of space, and then the seventh, whippy. Right, so this represents the M2 alpha helix. So it's this polypeptide that I'm just drawing as a line that snakes up in this sort of spring-like manner here. Okay, now, what you will notice is that um, the M2 alpha helix, we know that this lines the pore. So this is one of these red helices here. This is what I'm drawing. I've drawn one of these out. You'll have a ring of five, so I'll just actually draw a few more. I won't draw them in full out as springs like this because it will make the picture look messy. Uh, but I'll draw a few more as just cylinders, okay? So just because I'm lazy, I'm going to draw the next one here just as like a cylinder. To, but it really is the same as this with these seven turns. Okay, so here's the other, the next membrane spanning alpha helix. Then over here, you'll have another one. So that's three now. What you, so you can imagine it's this one, this one, and this one that we've drawn so far. What you will then have is two more, but I can't really show these because I'd have to draw them in front of where I now want to draw other things. So you'd have two more sitting sort of one here and one here to complete this ring that makes up the pore. And then you've got this gap in between the ring of five, and that's the actual pore of this channel. Now, what you will notice is that even though we say, so far we've said that the M2 alpha helices form the pore, but which actual amino acids on the alpha helix will actually be facing into the pore? Well, it's only going to be these ones that are on this side, basically. The ones that are at the back, they're not going to actually see the ions. So if you are an ion moving through this pore of the glucial channel, and we know that it conducts chloride anions, so if you're a chloride anion moving through the pore of this glucial channel, you are not going to see the amino acids on the back here. You're going to see the amino acids on the front. So, the amino acids which are actually exposed to the pore, they are given special names, basically. So, we number uh, amino acids. So, if you imagine having a polypeptide here, you can number amino acids. However, what you would think is the sensible way of doing it is starting at the amino terminus and naming that one 1 and then continuing on 2, 3, 4. Now that's the way we usually do it, but for some reason when naming these um, amino acids within the polypeptide, sorry, within this M2 alpha helix, what they decided to do was instead of sticking to this convention of starting with the amino terminus as um, well, the first amino acid as calling that number one, and then the second amino acid calling that number two. Instead, what they started to do was they named one of the amino acids in here as the zero amino acid. So around here, they labeled this amino acid as zero, basically. And then if you continue up, you go one, two actually faces into the pore. Then you continue on three, four, Five, six is another one that faces into the pore here. Okay, but you'll notice a problem with that. What about the ones that are later down here? Well, they're given negative numbers. So you have negative one, negative two also faces into the 
uh, poor. So there's a bit of an odd numbering system for the amino acids within um, this M2 alpha helix where we don't use this conventional way of labeling the amino acids within proteins. Instead, we use a way that's based on the actual M2 alpha helix. But this results in us having a zero amino acid and having negatives as well. So don't let that confuse you. It's still a counting system though. Okay, so there's another little complication to this. We also label the amino acids which are facing into the pore with a prime. So minus two prime, two prime, six prime. So the amino acids which actually face in to the pore of the glucial channel, they are labeled with a prime. So if we continue this counting exercise, we'll then have seven, okay? That doesn't face into the pore, so it's not labeled with a prime. Eight might be somewhere over here. 9 is here. 9 faces into the pore, so it's called 9 prime. Continue on. 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 faces into the pore, so it's labeled 13 prime. 14, 15, 16. 16 faces into the pore, so it's labeled with a prime. 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 faces into the pore, so it's labeled with a prime. So that's the prime numbering system, and it has absolutely nothing to do with prime numbers. It means we've just stuck this apostrophe, if you like, or this prime onto our numbers. And this is read 6 prime, 9 prime, 13 prime, 16 prime, uh, 20 prime. It's similar to in differentiation, where uh, you can denote the derivative of a function f of x by f prime of x. It's that sort of a prime. Right, but again, it has absolutely nothing to do with differentiation. It's got nothing to do with maths other than the fact that it's counting. Right, so these amino acids are the ones which actually face into the pore of the glucial channel. Now, we've seen that in other cis loop receptors, in the ones that we've seen in humans, and I want this video to stand on its own, so I won't assume that you've watched my other videos, but if you have watched my other videos, we know something about the structure of the cis loop receptors in humans. We know that uh, this 9' prime amino acid on the M2 alpha helix, and I suppose I should just say, uh, we are studying this glucial channel in uh, invertebrates, such as the Cenorhabditis elegans worm, but its structure is almost identical to the cis loop receptors in humans. So the fact that they are pentamers in this way, that's the same in humans. The fact that the membrane spanning topology looks like this, all the cis loop receptors in humans have that same membrane spanning topology. The arrangement of the four alpha helices is exactly the same. The fact that you have these five M2 alpha helices uh, lining the pore is exactly the same. And in human cis loop receptors, what we see is that at this 9' prime position, you have a very conserved amino acid. Uh, you usually have a hydrophobic amino acid, such as leucine or valine. So let me show you the structures of these amino acids. Okay, now I'll have to go over the page to do this. So, the structures of leucine and valine, they're both hydrophobic. So, we'll start with valine. Okay, so here's the amino terminus. I'll draw it as though it's actually in a polypeptide rather than drawing the free amino acid. So here's the alpha carbon, here's the carboxylic acid group, and then here it will be involved in an amide bond to the next amino acid. Then the R group of valine, I think we said we were going to start with, so it has a carbon with two methyl groups coming off it, like so, and then a hydrogen. So this is the amino acid valine. Okay, which is also known by the three-letter amino acid code VAL, or by the single-letter amino acid code V. Right, okay, so that's valine. Uh, now, the next one is leucine. So, at this position, 9' prime on these M2 alpha helices, in humans, uh, cis loop receptors, you usually have either valine or leucine. And I'll tell you what you have in this uh, glucial channel in a moment. Okay, so leucine is basically just a bigger version of valine. Okay, so again it has this, uh, well actually no, different. It has this methylene group in here, and then on the end it has this carbon with the two methyl groups coming off. So you can see that this R group of leucine over here is basically just a bigger version of this R group of valine. 
Okay, let me get some color on here to make it look more exciting. So basically, this structure here is the same as this bit here. So all you've done is stick this extra methylene group in between the alpha carbon and this group here. So this is the structure of the amino acid leucine, which has three-letter amino acid code LEU, single-letter amino acid code L. Right, so these amino acids have absolute, well, very little polarity. There's no polar bonds there because carbon and hydrogen have roughly the same electronegativity. So these bonds are not polar. So if you were to look at the charge density here, you'd just see neutral, 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 neutral. That means that the ability of these to interact with water molecules, which are polar, is very low. So that's why they're said to be hydrophobic, because they don't interact very favorably with water molecules. In addition, water is a polar structure, but it doesn't actually have proper charges. It only has partial charges. So if you actually try and get these to interact with ions, real charged particles, then are they going to be able to interact very favorably at all? Absolutely not. So they can't interact well at all with chloride anions, uh, which is what's uh, going to pass for our glucial channel. Now, I was saying that these are what you have in the nine prime position of the cis loop receptors in humans. Now, in glucial one, you don't even have to learn two of these. It's the leucine. In glucial one, which is a specific channel in this Xenorhabditis elegans and also other uh, worms, um, basically you just have leucine. So it's fixed. So let's go back and talk about what that means for this channel here. So basically, at the nine prime position, what you have on each of these um, M2 membrane spanning alpha helices is you have a leucine amino acid. So in here comes a leucine, in here comes a leucine, in here comes a leucine, and then from the other two, which I haven't drawn, there are also leucines. So let me color these in turquoise. So these are leucines. So they form this ring of leucines. So let me draw another picture. Okay, so if we view from above, I don't want to wreck this picture, so I'll just draw this pentagon of uh, M2 membrane-spanning alpha helices like this. So here we have the pentagon of M2 membrane-spanning alpha helices, and to make it even more blatant, I will um, color them in this red color again. Okay, and each one of these at the nine prime positions, so at the same level, you will have a leucine amino acid. So you've got these five leucine residues pointing into the pore, and you can see what this is forming. It's forming a little blockage of the pore. It's forming a gate. And all of these leucine amino acids are not going to interact with water, at, oh, sorry, they're not going to interact well with ions at all. So is a chloride anion going to be able to go through this pore when all of these five leucine amino acids are pointing into the center of it? No. So this is what's known as the hydrophobic girdle of the glucial channel. So this is the hydrophobic girdle. And you have this same hydrophobic girdle in, uh, um, in human cis loop receptors. Now hydrophobic girdles are also sometimes referred to as hydrophobic patches. And this basically is what keeps the uh, pore closed in um, the... Um, closed resting state of the glucial channel. So before any ligand is bound to the glucial channel, it's not conducting chloride anions, and this is why, because these leucine amino acids at the nine prime position of all the M2 membrane spanning alpha helices are forming this closed gate through the pore and stopping ions from being able to move. Okay, now you have this in this glucial channel as well as in the human uh, cis loop receptors. Now the difference between the human cis loop receptors and the glucial channel is that in the glucial channel you actually have two more of these gates. So in the human cis loop receptors you just have one of these gates, this one hydrophobic girdle at the nine prime portion, okay, at the nine prime amino acid of these five membrane spanning alpha helices. In this glucial channel in these worms, you're going to have two more of these hydrophobic patches. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next, in the next video.